Okay guys, today is really, really exciting. We have uh, Padme Amidala's kit. I'm gonna go over it briefly. I'm on my way out the door, so excuse me if you know all the quality's not amazing, but I'm in a little bit of a hurry today. So let's go over her basic first. Deal physical damage to the target enemy, which cannot be invaded. Keep that in mind, they cannot be invaded. All Galactic Republic allies gain protection up 10%. Does not stack with itself for one turn. Okay, does not stack with itself, which means uh, if she like auto attacks and then gets swapped with Thrawn, auto attacks again, everyone only has 10%. It doesn't stack. Got it? Okay. First special ability, Cunning Plan, to spell all debuffs on all light side allies, and they recover 50% health. For each Galactic Republic ally and each debuff dispelled from themselves, Galactic Republic allies gain protection up, 10% stacking for one turn. Now, it's worded a little weird, but let me explain it. Anyone who's a light side is going to have their debuffs expelled. Anyone who's light side is going to gain 50% health, okay? Or recover, I should say. But only the Galactic Republic allies with debuffs will gain the stack in protection equivalent to the amount of debuffs they had. Meaning if it's Amagundi and he has seven debuffs, he will be gaining 70% protection up. Okay? Very simple. Let's move on to the next move. This one is very interesting. Graceful Assault. You deal physical damage to the target enemy and stun them for one turn, which cannot be copied or dispelled. Then all light side allies with protection up and Jedi Knight Anakin are called to assist. So protection up is pretty limited. Uh, her synergy with protection up, as you can see from the first two moves, is really limited to the Galactic Republic. So it's going to be difficult to get um, a call to assist on light side allies with protection up. There's a few teams that come to mind right off the bat. Like she's going to work pretty well as a fifth in like the old Republic team. Uh, you could replace Juhani with her, and Mission and Zalbar both get protection up. So she could call them and then call Mission again because of the Zeta. And they also need like an AoE dispel, and you can they need a heal. So honestly, she might work pretty well if you only get her like five star and you're not going to go Galactic Republic team, but you want to like beef up one of the teams you already have. She might be a decent replacement to Juhani. But let's go ahead and continue. And also the other reason she might be a good replacement is you actually want to remove Juhani from the team because under Karth lead, you don't want to be calling Juhan Yu assist. You want to be like calling and then basically only getting like Kandris or Zalbar are the people you want to get. So this helps with that too. Let's continue though. Let's go to her leader. So this is a Zeta. First Zeta, she does have two Zetas. And let me read the leadership. Light side allies have plus 50% max health. And while they have protection up, they resist all debuffs and can't be critically hit. Keep in mind, this is resist all debuffs. Okay, this is not immune to all debuffs. I've seen some chatter already where people are like, my God, she's going to be Darth Revan. She's not going to be Darth Revan. She resists them, but their Darth Revan moves are unresistible. Okay, so at the start of the turn, Galactic Republic allies uh, dispel protection up buffs on themselves and gain one stack of courage for each. And by the way, I should clarify, the, the Darth Revan buff I'm talking about is fear. Okay, now she is immune to fear, which we'll talk about later, but... It, it, don't worry too much about your Darth Revan team when you're reading this, okay? I believe you're going to be fine. So at the start of the turn, Galactic Republic allies dispel protection up buffs on themselves and gain one stack of courage for each 5% protection up dispelled this way. Courage can't be copied, dispelled, or prevented when damaging the target enemy with an attack for each 5 stacks of courage. Dispel 5 stacks and deal bonus damage equal to 40% of the target's health. Max health. So this is uh, kind of a mouthful, but let me break it down. So it's almost kind of like a frosty mechanic. So you have someone who goes first, right? Galactic Republic guy goes first. He dispels all of the protection up buffs he may have, the stacking one. So let's say he has three stacking plus the one from the basic attack, that's four, right? Or let's just say he had four stacking plus the basic attack, that's five. So he has five stacks of protection. He gives him five stacks of courage, okay? For each 5% or for each 5% protection up dispelled this way, he gets a stack. So if he had if he had 50%, he's going to get 10 stacks. Okay, does that make sense? If he has 25% protection up, he's going to gain five stacks. And you need five stacks to trigger the effect, basically. So it should be fairly easy to trigger this. So essentially, what you'll do is when your dispel goes off and then people have turns, this should all be triggered. So uh, courage can't be copied, dispel, or prevented. So it's just going to happen. Um, when damaging the target of the enemy with an attack, with each five stacks of courage, dispel five stacks and deal damage equal to 40% of the target's health. So essentially, it works like this. Um, Padme AoE dispels everybody. Uh, they all get a bunch of stacks of courage. They take their turns and they do basically mini Malak damage. They, they drew the max health train, a uh, smaller portion of it. But 80% per person should be pretty easy to land. I do believe you'll be able to see those 80% fairly commonly. 
Now, this is what I think is going to make her disgusting in raids. Typically, max health percentage has a cap against raids, but it's somewhat generous. I mean, death mark and exposes are some of the best mechanics in the heroic Sith raid. So for these reasons, I do believe she's going to be pretty good. Um, I also believe she's going to be pretty good in part one because debuffs won't you like they resist all the debuffs, so you're not going to get you're not going to get the protection drain. Um, plus, just having protection up alone uh, should be able to keep them tanky. The only other thing is if it's not um, if it's not like the protection up can be dispelled, which I have to reread here. Yeah, it looks like each debuff dispelled. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it can be dispelled. So the the part one team they might auto attack and remove the protection up, but we'll have to see. She might be okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go to her next unique here. And if she won't be good in part one, she'll be good in part two, I'll tell you that much. Pa everyone's good in part two. Padme is immune to fear. And this is where we start to be in the real, like, um, I was, like, okay with the kit to this point. It doesn't make sense to me, um, why they would put this in the kit. I, which, it, thematically, it makes absolutely no sense. And I know we're not, the game's not really big into thematics, but, like, First Order, right, versus Resistance, where Resistance used Exposed, but the First Order was, like, good against Exposes. That was kind of a cool way of introducing mechanics, and it also, in my opinion, was fairly balanced. Like, I, I, I liked that. I also thought thematically it worked very well. This, this Padme Immune to Fear just feels really, really not not a well way to implement that. Plus, it doesn't make sense because it, it, in their previous post, which I'm not going to bother pulling up, you can find it if you want, but basically previous post, they said that the tip of the spear, meaning Malak, was going to be the top of Arena and Padme, I believe they even specifically stated, um, but I'm not, I, I'm not looking at evidence here, that they said they want Padme to be worse than the Darth Revan team and not be him. I'm pretty sure that's something they said or uh, implied, okay? And so it doesn't make sense to me that they're giving her a mechanic just to like help with that matchup because I thought the purpose was for her not if anything her kid's good against Jedi Knight Revan I don't like I don't see her being amazing against Darth Revan so I don't understand why they throw just her immune to fear it's unique it doesn't make any sense to me okay the only thing other thing I can think of is they want her to be good um but not get completely bodied by just one character so like if you have Darth Malak you could split up Darth Malak into like a different team and then she could always lose in threes basically so I think the Padme's immune to fear is probably like trying to make threes have another way through that she can deal with this. Um, but again, a lot of her damage comes from leadership and max health, which Malik's pretty immune to. So we'll have to see. But let's read the move. Padme's immune to fear. Whenever a light side ally loses protection up, they recover 5% health. So she gets kind of like an HK Zeta, Karth Zeta, you know, the, the standard. Allies can't gain or lose bonus turn either. Now here is a cool balance um, to the move. I do think her... Uh, her allies not being able to lose the term either, but also not being able to gain it, is a pretty good balance. I think that's a nice way of uh, keeping her from looping, from infinite loops to happen. I think it's a very nice way um, to, to keep her removed from some of the other characters like C-3PO they may not want to see in this team, for example. And maybe they're just like, I want C-3PO to be identified with Rebels, let's just make term either not a thing. So I, you know, I think that's fine. I also removes things like uh, BB-8 cheese, um, it removes, uh, let's think, what else, man? It, it removes, like, a lot of things, actually. It removes her from being, like, a fifth in, in a lot of other teams, like Rebels, that could be good. So it, it, it's an interesting way of kind of forcing her into a certain identity where she's good in some teams. Like, it doesn't change the Old Republic because they don't have any bonus term here is not a thing. They rely on dots, call to assist, and pure damage, and recovery. So I, for that reason, I think she's even more going to be good in there. But I, I, I like that, personally. I, I like that, actually, a lot. I think it was a clever mechanic. As much as I don't understand the immune of fear, I understand where they're going with this one, and I'm going to give them props for this one, because I think I, I like their choice of handling the bonus term meter. Let's continue on. Whenever an enemy attacks out of turn against the Galactic Republic, Republic ally, that ally gains protection up for one turn. Increased to 40% if Padme is their leader. So they get 40% protection up if they're attacked out of turn. So essentially what this hap what this means is if Padme is the leader, she's going to dumpster Jedi Knight Revan. I believe they're trying to do a rock, paper, paper, scissor meta where like or rock, paper, scissor, gun, right? We're like, Darth Malak's the gun, Jedi Knight Revan's the paper, Padme's the scissors, and the rock is... I don't even know what the rock would be at this point, man. I mean, like, what does Jedi Knight Revan beat? Everything else, right? So it, it's, it's kind of interesting how things are going to balance at the moment. Um, do you need this character? I'm going to say no. 
Uh, I think she's going to make a lot of characters that are bloat good. So I think this is, I, I think overall she's a good character to have in the game. I think there's a couple questionable things that I'm not really a fan on. There's not enough for me to get my panties, you know, in a twist about it. But I, I do think that she is a cool character. I think she is much needed for the Galactic Republic team. I don't think she is required to get it all, but I think she'll be very good for the raids. And I think she'll fix a lot of your bloat problems um, if you are inflated in GP, uh, bef you know, from the territory battle phase before Grand Rian was a thing. She makes a lot of those garbage characters good. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, I really like characters that bring other characters kind of out of the closet and, you know, kind of give them into the light and let them really have a chance to you know, get some use. So I, I think it's pretty cool. Overall, I'm not really mad at her kit. I, I think there's a couple things that don't really make sense. Like the mutant of fear is just really like, it's just throwing me off. It's got to be like a threes balancing thing or something. Um, or there's some mechanic I'm really not seeing here. I think she's going to do good against Jedi Knight Revan. I mean, she can't be evaded. Her, it just can't be evaded. She's going to be good with light side allies, has a way of recovering health. Do you, you know, removes debuff. She's got a lot of really good mechanics. And even the getting attacked out of turn, 40% protection for that turn, it just means Jedi Knight Revan is just going to be hitting on their protection the whole time. I'm, I'm really not worried about with Darth Revan, though, because in order for her to be good, you're going to really want Galactic Republic Jedi. And if you have Galactic Republic Jedi, then that just means that my HK-47 is going to go crazy and, like, kill your entire team. And he doesn't really care about your protection up. He'll just blow through it. I mean, he's overkilling people by, like, 100k. So, really, I'm not that worried. Uh, she's going to be fun, though. Going to be good in reds. Uh, if you're thinking about getting her, I think five star is probably reasonable because I think she's pretty good as a fifth. Um, if you're thinking about going all the way, uh, I think what you would get in return for your money of going all the way is you're going to get a good B team. Uh, you're going to get a good secondary Grand Arena team. You're going to get probably a good Heroic Sith team. And you're probably going to set yourself up for future Galactic Republic stuff that's coming up. Uh, I don't think she's going to be the only new Galactic Republic ally. And she, if you have clones, she's probably good on clones too. Because like I'm sitting here thinking about it. She might be a decent leader to clones because they're all Galactic Republic ally too. So there, there's there's some things that she can do that will be decent. So if you're considering getting her, I say go for it. I She's going to be expensive. Oh yeah, let's talk about the gear real quick. Real quick because I got to get going. But her gear is atrocious. Here's the full gear list. She takes five stun guns, four eyeballs... I just, it, it's too much. And she also takes a new Cryer Tech. I mean, if you look here, starting at gear eight, it's too much. I mean, starting at gear eight, they want they want Cryer Techs and a stun gun. And then they want double stun cuff, a furnace, a stun gun, another Cryer. I mean, and then another cry. Like, look how many of these are. This is like another 5K, 10K of Christos um, minimum for just the new pieces. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with the gear. I think it's a little, it's a little much, but maybe they, it's the only way for them to get the base stats. I don't know. Uh, but she's going to be expensive. So long story short, if you're thinking about getting her, five stars probably enough. Seven stars, she's going to be good in raids, and she's probably a very good B-Squad team. Be ready to spend money on gear. Be ready to spend money on the event. All right. Uh, so cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I'll catch you next time.